In these notes, we're going to talk about writing recursive and explicit equations. So instead of interpreting them when they're given, we're actually going to create them. And we're going to do this in um, just for arithmetic sequences right now. This is section 1.4. So the examples, um, the directions are identify the common difference in each sequence, then write the recursive and explicit equations. So in our first example, we have the example 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, etc. So um, we can see that this is arithmetic. Not only are we talking about arithmetic, but we can also see that to go from 4 to 9 and 9 to 14 and 14 to 19, I'm adding 5 each time. So we say that our common difference, D, is 5. Now, we're going to need to write the recursive and explicit equations. Um, the recursive is the one that you're the least familiar with um, from past math courses, but it's actually the way you think about these sequences. You think about where they begin, where they begin at 4, and how they grow. So they grow by adding 5 each time. And this is the place where we have to use that funky notation, where we say our current term, f of n, where we start, equals our previous term plus 5. So we start by saying where we start and what we do each time. Once I've written the recursive, the explicit is a lot easier to write. So in the explicit, I always start where I'm starting, so f of 1 equals 4. And then I'm going to say what I do each time. And what I do each time is I multiply by positive five, add by positive 5, which means I'm actually multiplying the n by 5. Now, there are two ways to write the explicit. This first way, I have to go back and I have to say to myself, well, in order to get this first term, did I add 5? And the answer is I didn't add 5. I didn't add 5 to the second. So in order to talk about the second, we talk about the fact that I actually had to go back one term in order to go plus 5. That's one way to deal with this. The other way is to remember that we could write this as the f of 0 plus 5. 5 times n, because I'm adding 5 each time, adding 5 over and over again is multiplying, but I need the f of 0 term. So here I have the f of 1 term. So I know the f of 1 equals 4, and I want to go backwards one time to get f of 0. Well, forwards, I'm adding 5. So backwards, I would be subtracting 5, which now means that I can write this as f of n equals negative 1 plus 5n. If I distribute the 5 here in this first way of doing it and simplify, I will get this equation. They are what we call equivalent. They give us the same answers even though they look slightly different. Example 2. Example 2, we have the sequence 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, etc. In this case, unlike example 1 where I'm adding something each time, this time I'm subtracting something each time. But remember, our d value has to be what we're adding. So subtracting 2 is the same as adding by negative 2. So now I can go and I can write my recursive. Again, I say where I start. First term, f of 1 equals 12. And then I say what I need to do each time. I'm going to subtract 2 each time. And the notation is actually going to be the exact same thing we have up here. It is the current term 
equals the previous term minus 2. This piece of the notation doesn't change. The N may change um, to be another letter, or the F may change to be another letter, but this idea of F of N and F of N minus 1 will remain the same. So now I can more easily write the explicit. And again, I can do this one of two ways. The first way is I can say F of N begins at 12. I subtract 2 each time, but I don't do it for the first term, so I have to go back 1. The second way to do this is to say, well, I want to use the 0 term so that I can simply say minus 2n. I don't have to think about this going backwards business. So I need to find what f of 0 is. So I know that f of 1 is 12, so to go backwards, I'm going to have to do the opposite of what I do when I go forwards. When I go forwards, I subtract 2. So if I go backwards, I add 2. So I now can write the explicit by saying 14 minus 2n.